Hi folks and welcome to another Sonic Academy tutorial with me, Phil Johnston. In this one we're going to take a look at how you can assimilate kicks in Kick 2 um, using samples that might not be so clean. If you've ever listened to a track and thought, I really want to get that uh, kick sample but it's got artifacts in it, maybe a hi-hat or something like that, I'm going to show you how you can import a sample into Kick 2 and sort of synthesize its sub and um, get a nice clean kick that you can then modify and do things like um, tuning and pitching and some other modifications. So we'll have a look at all that um, in the video we're about to do. So let's get started. First thing you want to do, um, you want to match kick to, um, to your screen resolution as, so basically get it as big as you can get it. Um, so let me see. I'll go 150. Um, because we're going to do a lot of fine detail work, it helps to have the GUI as big as you can get it. Really, I'll maybe even try going one slot bigger. So we're really just working on the wave portion of this. Okay, so we can load in our kick and. So this is the original kick. You can hear how it's obviously quite noisy, just sampled it straight from the track. So we've got a lot of artifacts there. Um, and what we're going to do is use Kicks 2's sub engine to just m model this sub part of the kick and match it up. And we can do that because when we go into our pitch mode, we can also overlay the original sample. So we've got that as well. And what we want to start doing is trying to match up some of these frequency nodes so they tie in with the original sample. And um, what I'd like to do first is just to get the amp envelope um, sounding the same. So we're going to match the levels of these. You can do this pretty roughly. We can tweak this at the end. Just moving our volume nodes to try and get it to fit along with what we see here. And I've alt clicked on this because I don't want any curves. I'll just take out curves because sometimes they can create clicks. And yeah, I think that's roughly right. We'll go and zoom in at the start a bit. Volume there. So that's roughly about right. When we zoom out, we should see that we've sort of captured in a rough way the volume envelope of that original kick sample. And now we're going to try and match up as closely as possible the sub to the sample. Okay, so you can see that there's a lot of tight waveform data here. Up until this point, it, it's sort of this is all sort of click as it's called, and then after that, you can see that it sort of opens out into. Um, lower pitched waves. So we can go up and create something kind of like this, just replicate it. And I will probably in the end just use the sample for the click. And the next element we want to do is basically try and match a node up so we can find this portion of our waveform. So kick works in a logarithmic fashion. So you get a lot of detail at the front. So sometimes it can be a bit counterintuitive initially when you're searching for where these nodes line up to the nodes on the waveform. You can see if I start moving, if you notice around this area, there's nothing moving before it. Actually, I will drag this down time this way. 
now we can see our point is about there. So this node is actually corresponding to a point in time somewhere around here. And we'll actually go even further down. I just want to try and get it right in the middle of this. Sort of there. And now we can sort of start look at matching the pitch roughly. So there's uh, that pitch is roughly matched up there. So we're probably in the ballpark with this node. We can see there that, that overlaps quite nicely. Zoom in a tiny bit. Let's turn snap and tags off for a second. So that's looking pretty good. Right. I'll start and match these. Sometimes you have to go back to move a node that's not inside the zone you're looking for, and this can help you um, change the phase without changing the pitch of the section you're working on. See now. We're working on this section, if you keep your eye around here. Pitch for this. I see these ones start to line up. Zoom out. The node around here. You can see around this area is where we're now modifying. Got all these nicely lined up now. But again, point is around here. So you move that. start to see a, a picture build up of where your nodes are lying and how they sort of form a, a bit of a pattern. Bit low there. this one. I think that's roughly it. You can sort of check through. Maybe a bit low at the very end. We can adjust that. And if we put our snaps and tags on again, we can see where we are. So we're around a G. That sort of sounds about right. And we'll just check through closer and we can go through. Just look how close we are. And we're pretty close right up to this point. And then as I say, we'll be using the sample probably for this initial portion. So let's mute our sample and see what our sub sounds like. Very chirpy in the top end. So. Less chirpy. Mm. 
this. Fears, C. Lining up next to there. So there we go, that's our sub. Pretty closely matched. Oh, now we can turn our original kickback on. We can solo it. If we go into our clicks, we're just going to create a, an amplitude node. So we can get to about there without any artifacts. You can see that overlaid. We're actually almost into the subby part of the kick, but you can see when you zoom in, because we match the nodes, there shouldn't be any phase issues. And actually we can go into our the amp of our sub and we don't need the start portion really, we can start to bring it down. Nodes we don't need. And I'll just make it regular size again. So we can modify some of our other parameters. And now we've got separate click and our separate sub. And the cool thing is now we can do things like tuning our kick. So can check out our tags. If we wanted it bang on a G, we can just notch both of these down to G. You could even tune those further by making the lowest fundamental note longer. You can make it an A. So just now that because we've got it into this format of being able to synthesize the, the sub, we can do a lot more to it. We can add some tape saturation. And obviously we've got our EQ and stuff as well there we can use. So there we go, that is how you can import a sample on Steelit's sub essence. Um, it can be a wee bit tricky and a bit fiddly initially, but once you've done it a few times, um, you'll get used to how sort of the node system works and how, um, because it's logarithmic, um, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So, and there are reasons why it's not why it is logarithmic. So it's a wee bit tricky, but um, we did toy around with having a separate mode, which we may do in a later version of Kick, but. Or now, that's the way to do it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So, if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.